Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Michael Basaku, Global Affairs Analyst, Senior Fellow at the Atlantic Council. It is Wednesday, March 23rd, and hard to believe, but uh, right now we're pretty much observing the one month of uh, the start of hostilities in Ukraine, one month since Russian forces crossed over the border and invaded Ukraine. Since that time, of course, uh, thousands uh, killed, uh, thousands injured, including many uh, women and children, and millions displaced. Uh, we're now talking about upwards of 10 million people internally displaced, but also displaced beyond uh, Ukraine's borders. Uh, this is representing um, a quarter of the Ukrainian population. And, um, you know, in, in history, of course, we've seen from Syria and elsewhere, uh, mass displacement of people, but I think it's fair to say that we've never seen in such a short period, think about a one month, upwards of 10 million people on the move. So um, lots to think about as we uh, uh, cross this uh, kind of uh, very uh, emotional uh, mark of one month. And uh, of course, the question uh, on many people's minds is how long will those last? Are we talking about days or weeks or months? And are we talking about a frozen conflict uh, which will drag on for a long time? I just wanted to read um, a comment made yesterday by, I know someone uh, a lot of people respect, um, Edward Lucas. He used to write for The Economist. He's been to Ukraine many, many times. He knows the country very well. But last night on the uh, uh, Frontline Online panel in London, speaking of the Ukraine war, he said, the worst is yet to come. I think we're facing the most ghastly, costly, risky, unpleasant, traumatizing weeks ahead before anything begins to get stable, let alone better. 12 hours ago almost, um, I hosted a Twitter Spaces. Uh, we had um, of the Kiev Independent newspaper, Olga Rodenko, the editor-in-chief, Ilya Pomorodenko, the defense reporter, and we had Ila Jean Yakli um, of the FT and Political Europe in Istanbul. Fascinating discussion, and uh, I'll, I'll be posting the link uh, on all of my social media platforms. It's just amazing conversation. Uh, but I think at the end of that, we kind of more or less figured out that we're somewhere in between a not-so-bad scenario and the scenario that um, Edward Lucas described. Um, a lot of this uh, depends on the kind of assistance from the West Ukraine will receive in the days ahead. Uh, also, the increasing pressure on uh, Putin's inner circle, uh, the Russian economy. Uh, one would think that the West has fired most of its kind of economic tools or darts, if you will, uh, but the Russian economy still, it has to be said, benefits from lots of millions of dollars every day coming for that payment of uh, Russian oil and gas being exported, much of it to Europe. Um, the other thing, of course, is there's much more sophisticated weaponry coming into this theater of war here into Ukraine uh, that will, in theory, give the Ukrainian army the ability to deal with the growing Russian uh, strategy of using long-range weaponry but, of course, the big fear lurking in the background is that uh, feeling he's been backed into a corner, feeling he's not having much result on the battlefield, that Mr. Putin will result to resort rather to chemical weapons, weapons of mass destruction, uh, even a nuclear weapon. Uh, there were reports that haven't been verified yet of the use of phosphorus um, weapons in uh, some parts of Ukraine in the east. So that's where we are uh, on this one month mark. Uh, I think there's a mix of good news and bad news in everything I've said and everything that's been discussed over the past while. I will do my best to give you as clear uh, and accurate a picture as possible from where I sit. And um, it has to be said, it, this is Western Ukraine. We're quite a distance away from the front line, from the violence. But uh, of course, the reminders of the war here is never far away. All you have to do is go outside and see the crush of internally displaced people as well as the air raid sirens uh, the more 
increase uh, militarization of the city, that sort of thing. Thank you uh, for listening and tuning in. Uh, again, this is Michael Bosacue, Global Affairs Analyst, and your fellow with the Atlantic Council. Everyone, please stay safe. Bye-bye.